everybody, my name is Christina. Um, I am getting the vertical sleeve gastrectomy, the VSG, or also known as the sleeve. I am one week away, and I am more nervous than you could possibly ever think because it's kind of doing it on my own, and much like everybody else, um, I know everybody else is kind of nervous or scared, but I'm excited too. So there's more than just being nervous and just gotta go with it, gotta be strong, you know? Um, I'm going to be getting my sleeve done by Dr. Wersing in Florida. That's where I am located. I, I'm not getting paid for any kind of promotion or anything like that, I just wanna put that out there. Um, he is a little bit hardcore and I'm okay with that. I did get some, uh, some kind of pamphlets and stuff like that of, you know, things to take, um, vitamins, so bariatric advantage. Um, I'm looking into that. I'm kind of confused on which vitamins to start taking. So many people are telling me um, go with bariatric advantage, some take uh, fusion, um, some even take Flintstones gummies for children. So I'm still debating on which one to start taking. I haven't. I guess I kind of have to make up my mind like today <laughs> so I can order and have it ready for when I have my surgery. Um, a couple of things I did ask the doctor when I went for my pre-op. Sorry, I have my notes here. Um, it's my first video, so I kind of want to give you a little bit of my insight here. Um, my high weight was 279. Um, so I was kind of getting up there after I had my hysterectomy and everything like that and Then I went to go see a nutritionist after I decided I was going to do the sleeve and the nutritionist had me kind of on a path to Help me lose weight instead of getting the sleeve which after as much weight as I did lose with him um, I lost 60 pounds and I decided I wasn't gonna have the sleeve. He was giving me fentermine, which I'm sure many of you if you were on that path, did take. Um, I, he was also giving me a couple of shots and stuff like that to help me lose the weight, which I did. Um, after I lost the weight, I ended up going in for a, a procedure that was separate from this, and it was actually causing me um, problems speaking one of the medicines, which was Topamax. It was causing me problems getting my words out to the point where there was times where I would just start crying and I couldn't handle it anymore. Um, so I decided to stop taking everything. And I was like, you know what, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get the sleeve, I'm gonna have the surgery and use this tool because now I've learned how to portion myself, I've learned what to eat, um, how to eat, etc. So I know that it would be beneficial. Um, once I stopped taking all the medicine, I mean, I went down from, I was 279 and I dropped to 221. So um, quite almost 60 pounds there. I actually ended up gaining about 20 pounds back since April. So in about April, May, June, July, almost three months, um, I've gained 20 pounds. And that's just, eat, I have been eating a little bit uh, more since I stopped the medicine and I don't like it. Um, it doesn't make me feel good because I just have more of that craving um, since I stopped all the meds. But I don't wanna take medication anymore. I don't know about you guys, but it, it's good for the first couple months. Um, but I started developing a little bit like heart flutters and like I said, the uh, speech impediment and I was getting dizzy quicker when I wouldn't eat. Um, and it just, it wasn't, I could feel when I wasn't taking it. Let's put it that way. Um, so I stopped taking it. I started gaining the weight back. And now I have decided to do the sleeve. So that is where I'm at right now. Um, I went in for my pre-op visit, finally got my date, which I'm having surgery July 5th, 2018. So I am one week away. So. This day, next week, I will be on the loser's bench and I'm super excited. So, um, 
liquid diet. Liquid diet, I've been on, I have cheated once or twice because it's very, very hard. So no negative comments on that. It, it, it is very hard, um, but it's been lighter meals and I, I kind of follow it throughout the day. So what I do is for my water intake, I have been drinking a lot of water. So that's probably why I haven't been losing um, the weight so much being on the liquid diet because I've been drinking so much. Um, for my protein shakes, I drink Premier Protein. Absolutely love Premier because that's actually what I've been doing for like the past year or so. Um, ever since I started losing weight, which was June of last year. So just about a year now, I've been drinking Premier Protein. Um, I like the chocolate. I've also tried strawberry. Strawberry is a little bit more chalky for me. Um, I've also tried, was it cookies and cream? Or an Oreo, Oreo cookies and cream. Not bad. Um, kind of have to have the taste for it. Um, I do want to try the banana and I heard the caramel for coffee is actually pretty good. So if you look up on uh, Pinterest, there are some really cool recipes for Premier Protein that people do to kind of make it easier to get still get your protein in. I've been doing a lot of research and to be honest with you, this is this has been my outlet <laughs> is social media and how to get through this because my doctor is great. However, there's not much support there. Um, he's very straightforward. It's kind of, this is what's going on. This is it. There's no, you know, motivation type of stuff there. He's just like, this is what you need to do. So this is what I'm doing. Um, I, aside from my premier protein, I do broth. There's this really awesome broth. Um, it comes in a, a little jar and it's already kind of pre-made and it's like a paste. And the paste, you scoop it and you just put it in and it's all natural um, and it's really, really good. I, lo I love it to be honest with you because it kind of still gives you that. Um, I do the vegetable one. The vegetable one is really good because you could still kind of taste all the vegetables. Um, and that's one thing I do. I also do Lipton soup, but I strain out the noodles. Um, so that's one thing I've been doing. And then sugar-free jello. Sugar-free jello. I love blue jello and I can't find any. So jello does not make the blueberry jello anymore for whatever reason, or if they ever even did, I'm not quite sure, but I can't find it anywhere, not even on their website. So it's all red. Um, I have tried strawberry banana. I have just made peach raspberry and it tastes amazing. So I basically, I buy peach and I buy raspberry, mix it. Kind of something to get you through the day. Um, popsicles, popsicles are your friend. Make sure you get sugar free. They have the ones where you can kind of break them in half they also have popsicles makes a popsicle <laughs> that is sugar free so those are definitely to try and if you have a sweet tooth I actually got um, Russell Stover made a mint chocolate sugar free everything I've been buying is sugar free and that's pretty much what you guys want to do is make sure you stay on sugar free because the sugars is what's gonna make you regain the weight um, so I'm going to be a blunt person. These videos are going to be very open. If you guys have questions, like I said, I am one week out, but any question you have, whether it's, you know, something basic or something a little personal, I'm okay with that. Um, I did ask my doctor sex. How long after can I have sex? Because my husband wanted to know. I wanted to know. And I'm sure many of you want to know. Um, he did tell me basically when I start to feel better, when I start to feel comfortable. So whether that's, you know, you finding out on your own or you just testing the waters, see how you start feeling in those areas, that's completely up to you and your body. Um, things to avoid are basically lifting. Uh, you don't want to be lifting right away after 
you do want to start walking right away. That's from what my understanding and a lot of people have been talking about is walk. As soon as you can, as, even while you're in the hospital, you're going to need to walk because you're going to want to get that gas out of you, you know, from the, um, from the procedure to begin with. After you get the gas out of you, um, when you get home, you are still going to be sore from what I'm understanding. So next week after my surgery, I am going to do a video and I probably won't look all pretty. I won't have no makeup on, so beware. <laughs> but uh, I will do a video and let you guys know how I feel, what I'm feeling, what I've been doing, etc. Um, what else? Follow up care. You will follow up with your surgeon. Um, your surgeon will obviously tell you how you're doing. It'll probably be about two weeks um, or so after the surgery. Um, your hospital stay, depending on how you do, and it all really depends on how you do, um, it could be one night you'll stay in or um, there are some people that have stayed up to three nights. So it all depends on your body and how fast you can uh, go to the bathroom, how fast you can get up and walk, if you're feeling nauseous. I am understanding that a lot of younger people, um, I'm, I'm 32, so he told me people my age normally get nauseous. Um, so I did get a medicine that I'm supposed to take the night before and then the day, the morning of. Um, and then, of course, for what I'm understanding, 12 hours before surgery, there's nothing. You're not allowed any liquids, any food, obviously, you haven't been on food anyway, but no food, liquids, basically brush your teeth, get to the hospital, take your nausea pill, and get ready for a new life. Um, guys, I'm, I'm really excited. As you can tell, I'm super nervous, but, but by talking about this, it really, it really makes me feel a lot better. And it's been a really hard, a really hard emotional roller coaster to even decide to do this. Sorry, I'm getting a little emotional. Um, to even decide to do this because it's not something you just be like, oh, well, I'm, I'm choosing the easy way out. Guess what? This is not the easy way. If you guys want an easy way out, this is not the easy way out because it is hard. It screws you up in the head as far as, I can't say it screws you up, but it, it's it's total, what they say, a mind fuck. Because you're like, okay, you're used to living one way and being able to eat whatever you want, being able to drink if you want to if you want to drink, whether that's soda, alcohol, whatever you want to do, you can do because guess what? What, you're gonna gain a pound or two and you know, then it'll be another pound or two, then it'll be another pound or two and then you end up living this life of being overweight and you didn't even realize where you where it started from. But this journey of getting the sleeve I mean, I've been doing this for a year now, where I've been going back and forth, back and forth, because, you know, I lost 60 pounds, woo, I'm good. But then as soon as they took me off those meds, I gained a good portion of it back. And I don't wanna live that life, I wanna live a healthy life. I wanna be, I wanna be able to run with my kids and not be out of breath, or, you know, get up in the morning and not have pain and, uh, you know, maybe apply for a job that somebody will look at me differently because I'm not heavy. And yes, there are many judgmental people out there that look at you because you're heavy. Even if you have makeup on and even if you're dressing nice, they're like, oh, she's heavy. That must mean she's lazy. That must mean she can't do her job. No, it doesn't. It just means, guess what? My family got together a lot when I was younger. I'm Italian, Yugoslavian, and Russian. We ate. We ate a lot. My grandma loved her breads. She loved her baking when she was alive. And guess what? I was her guinea pig. So, 
it wasn't the fact of I ate and ate and ate and ate and I couldn't control it. No, we just, we liked to eat and have fun. I don't have any health problems. I don't have diabetes. I don't have anything of that nature. I'm completely healthy other than my weight. Um, you know, and many other people out there struggle with diabetes and that's out of their control or, you know, eating is an addiction at the end of the day. And that's a whole nother, that's a whole nother video. But there's times when no, I can't control myself or I'll have a craving and I don't know how to fix it. But there are ways, you know, if you're craving a piece of chocolate, there's something else you can eat that'll take that craving away. Um, and I'm actually gonna get a list of that for you guys and I'm gonna have a video just based on that later down the road because there are some things that I found out that I'm like, wow, really? Like if you have a carrot, that'll take away your sweet craving? Okay. I can do that. <laughs> um, so make sure you guys ask me questions. You know, like I said, no matter what you're going through, like I said, m social media has been my my comfort zone. There's been a lot of people that have been super supportive, but there's a lot of people close to me that aren't supportive of this either. Um, my parents, I love them. They will support me till the day I, you know, till the day they die or I die. And they're just, I know they're just scared for me to have this surgery because it's a different life. I am changing my life 100%. Um, they say, can't you do it without the surgery I have I have but it's a tool this surgery is gonna be a tool for me for you for someone that you love whoever whatever or why ever you came to this video it's to show you guys what the next steps are why the vertical sleeve is so is the tool I, I you know I, I I have a hard time with words so excuse me um, but you can th this is you doing it on your own you getting the sleeve is you doing it on your own at the end of the day nobody else is helping you with this you are gonna be the one that decides okay am I gonna have something this small to eat or am I going to have a plate full of food and feel so disgusting by the end of it because you're so full? I've been there. I know when I decided the surgery that I was going to do it, I pigged out. I have been pigging out up until I had to start my liquid diet because I was like, oh my gosh, I, I have to eat before I can't eat ever again. It's not that you can't eat ever again. It's not that you can't even have a piece of pizza if you want to. But instead of five pieces of pizza, you'll have one, if that. Um, you know, there's so many more things that you're still gonna be able to do, but it's just gonna, it's gonna be a lifestyle change. Um, make sure you guys come back to these videos because they will get better, I promise you. They definitely will get better, it's just, it's a lot of information, um, you know, all in one. Expect also, there's something that I've been learning as well, uh, your gallbladder, apparently, if you, if you still have your gallbladder, expect you to have issues um, further down the line possibly because things aren't gonna filter the same way anymore. So I've heard that a lot of people end up having their gallbladder removed down the line. Some even have it removed during. Um, that is something that I'm going to be doing as well because I'm already having gallbladder issues, um, but my doctor won't remove it during unless I get some kind of proof that I'm having gallbladder problems. I don't know, I guess it's not medically necessary just yet. Um, so back to what I've been eating. Um, sorry, I'm kind of jump, jumping around over here, but I have, like I said, breakfast. Um, my doctor told me I could actually have, for
for breakfast hot cereal so oatmeal um, oatmeal and it's the plain nasty oatmeal um, so I get a little bit of cinnamon and I put a little bit of cinnamon in it so I can have some kind of flavor get the the original oatmeal by uh, Quaker or whatever um, and I make that put it in the microwave I make it nice and thick that way it's a little easier to kind of take down um, because it runny it's not as good so I just put it in for a little longer to plump up the oats a little bit more um, and that's normally around on my days off because I work at 2.30 in the morning. Um, on my days off, I'll normally have it around 8. And then um, it's either my oatmeal or I'll have a shake. And my shake, I'll mix with my coffee. So I get decaffeinated coffee. Because um, guess what, guys? No more caffeine. So you want to start weaning yourself off now. And that's what I've already started doing. Um, wean yourself off of the caffeine now. That way it's not going to be as hard. Um, I'm having headaches because I'm used to having caffeine every day. Whether it's my coffee or, you know, um, soda. And I don't drink soda very often, but most of the time it's like a ginger ale or I love my club soda. Love, 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 love my club soda. But you're not going to be able to drink that after surgery either right away um now some people say that they can drink it about a year later six months later they can have a few sips um it all depends on your body and it all depends on how you feel but it's not recommended um because of the i guess the gas bubbles uh, it's not good for the stomach so that is something that i'm learning um, as well but I guess it really depends on the person and what you choose um, make sure that you speak with your doctor about it and you guys develop a plan um, the the liquid diet I'm you know a lot of people have gone through and I've seen some liquid diets where it's strictly liquid my doctor Every doctor is going to be different. My doctor actually had it, like I said, where I have the oatmeal, I can have yogurt, um, and then I've been doing it, it's cream of soup, so 98% fat free Campbell's. Um, it's going to be like cream of broccoli, or was it broccoli? Broccoli cheddar, um, cream of mushroom, and then cream of chicken. So, what I do is like for the cream of chicken or, you know, stuff like that. Um, I basically strain the chicken out of the cream of chicken that way there's no meat in it um, and I still have the flavor and then I'll add like maybe a little bit of pepper um, that way I have a little bit of a different flavor and then drinks what I've been doing is I've been drinking um, I'll take the uh, water I got, a, I got a nice big water bottle that is 24 ounces and I drink typically about probably about eight of them a day, <laughs> no joke. I've been actually drinking more, but I'll go to Walmart and I'll get the little, um, the little crystal light packets or the Walmart brand packets and I'll just put them in there and it'll actually, I put normally like half a packet so it's not as strong um, and it's great because it gives me a little bit of a flavor and it's easy you know I could just throw it in um, what I've been doing the past couple of days is I actually got a lunchbox and with that lunchbox I take it with me so I went to Dollar Tree and I got a one of the cool packs that I could you know pop in the freezer you know keep everything cool um, and I put them in and basically after what I do is I bring it um, you know, out with me. So I'll pack it with water, I'll pack it with uh, my, um, my protein shakes, and I'll pack it with, you know, whether it's a yogurt or something like that. Um, Cause I can't, you know, if you bring broth with you, it's, you're not gonna be able to heat it up really while it's in a cooler. So it's just normally water, 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 and my protein shakes if I'm out on the road. Um, but those the, those little packets, you know, or the Mio's, I see a lot of people drinking the Mio's where you could just squirt it in and it's easy and you, you know, be done. 
no, you know, it's five calories or something like that per packet or per squeeze. And it's, it's easy, it's easy. But anyway, um, I've been on here for about 25 minutes now. Um, I just wanna say thank you to all of my supporters, everybody that's stood by my side, everybody that will continue to stand by my side. I'm gonna do a before, mid, after. I'm gonna keep doing these videos. The more people that get interested, the more feedback I get, I will be here for you guys because I know how how hard it is to not have anybody be there for me through this process. If it wasn't for a lot of you YouTubers, a lot of you Instagrammers, I wouldn't be able to do this surgery in general because I I didn't have the confidence. I didn't know where I was doing, what I was doing, how I was doing. I mean, I, I'm even on Facebook, um, support groups you want to have the support without support it's harder to succeed I'm not gonna say you're not going to succeed and I'm not gonna say that I'm not going to succeed because I will and you will and we could be there for each other you know what I mean social media is sometimes the best outlet for you and it is for me especially in this type of situation right now because not a lot of people around me have been through this not a lot of people, and I didn't know, honestly, until I posted my first picture and announced that I was gonna do the surgery, how many people came out of the woodworks and they're like, guess what? I had the surgery too. Wow. You'd be surprised how many people are gonna come out and support you. People that you may not even remember you know, people that I've had on my Facebook for years, people that I went to middle school, high school with, and they're like, oh my gosh, I had that surgery too. If you need anything, I'm here. You have questions, I'm here. We can do this. That's awesome. Cause guess what? You're gonna, you may feel lonely at times. I did, I still do, but this is where I'm coming and this is, gonna be my outlet and I want to thank you guys for being my supporters I want to thank you for any questions that you may have you know make sure that you like and you share this video make others see the process um, I know the first video is not gonna be that great so like I said I do apologize but we're gonna have fun um, and let's start a new life thank you so much for being here and I look forward to what comes next, and I'm gonna do a little stand-up that way. For me, we can see where I'm at. Um, right now, like I said, I'm around 242. Uh, my starting weight was 279, but I wanna do my before videos, and that way I can see the progress as well. So right now I have, since I've lost the weight already, I have a lot of loose skin. My doctor told me that he has this new procedure where he's actually able to tone the skin. So I have a lot of loose skin, which we're gonna have it, ladies and gentlemen. We're gonna have the loose skin, but you know what? We gotta tone it. We gotta tone it, we gotta work on it. And you know, some of us might even need uh, reconstructive surgery afterwards and you know, tucks and whatever we gotta do. But right now, you know, I am, this is me right here. Um, so not, I mean, it's not too bad, you know. I'm not sucking it in or anything, but I, I mean, I have, I have some back fat that I do want to get rid of. I have the thighs. Um, my, my thighs are loose, a little loose already. Um, but, you know, I have that extra the extra skin on my the bottom of my stomach um, from where I had my hysterectomy, um, and that's that's very uncomfortable already. So I can only imagine how it's going to be after surgery, but it's going to be worth it. And I want you guys to be here through my journey. I'm going to be there through your journey. If you're going through the sleeve surgery, or for, if we're twins, you know, on our surgery dates, anything of that nature tag me, um, message me. I'll put all of my information on here. We can
talk, we can get through this with each other. Once again, thank you. God bless everybody. And I look forward to a new beginning with everybody. Thanks.